All right. Well, it we're is, back. We're back. It's time for another uh, economic discussion, and this time it's poultry. Now we will say up front before we get into this, uh, the numbers are really weird and don't look as fantastic, but. This seems to be an ongoing thing in all of our economic videos. <laughs> the numbers to, are not looking fantastic. And we're going to uh, explain to you why. <laughs> so this video is going to be a combination of our poultry. So f for those who don't know, we have uh, a flock of Pratt Street Chanticleer chickens and, and a flock of American geese. buff geese. So we only, we have tried other poultry in the past, but right now we're only keeping there are two kinds of poultry, so we figured we'll just combine these because uh, well, there's a lot more to talk about with the chickens than there is with the geese, but uh, they're also an interesting comparison between the two of them. Mm -hmm. So I guess we will start. Starting with kind of what we had in our flock at the beginning of the season. So we started out with 28 birds, adult mm -hmm. birds. We did really well in 2020 of making sure that we butchered everything that was supposed to be butchered before the end of the year. And we also grew our flock. So we had a lot of young birds carrying over mm -hmm. to be in our breeding flock because for in 2019 we essentially downsized. Yes, when we, we came moved. to the farm with only 12 chickens. So those 12 chickens then produced enough offspring for us to upscale to the 29 with the help of some trades and things like that mm -hmm. throughout the season, which uh, we'll link the video above of the uh, chicken trade. But anyways, so we started off with our 28 birds, which was fantastic because that is our goal in the long run to end each year with 28 birds. That 20, is one 20, thing. 28 to 30. Yeah. Basically a flock of around 30, uh, 30, 30 chickens. Breeding, breeding flock. And uh, that's something we did not do so well with this year, but we'll explain that a little bit later. But anyways, we had... 28 birds to start. We actually hatched out 89 chicks uh, in the, the hatching season and beyond, which is also going to come up later in the discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, but in total, we spent $1,330.67 feeding the chickens. Mm -hmm. Now, this included, um, we do a, a, a sprouted grain, which we'll also link that video somewhere above mm -hmm. here. But uh, so this included oats, barley, wheat, which were our main kind of principal items in the spread of grains. And then sunflower seeds, lentils, a, a millet mixture, and we had three bags of chick starter, non-medicated chick starter for early, you know, on. early on to start them. All in all, we definitely had some learning curves once we looked at the final numbers in January. <laughs> well, and there's a, there's a big thing too, like we <clears throat> noticed over 2021, 20, certain parts of that feed mix have gone up. Yes. Well, certain feeds in general have gone up. Uh, the big one was the millet mix has gone up quite a bit. Yes, and uh, the sunflower seeds and sunflowers have gone, have gone up, gone up saw, quite a bit. I think it's about an $8 jump in a 50-pound bag of sunflower mm -hmm. seeds, black oil sunflower seeds, which so is pretty significant. one big thing with that feed cost, in the grand, and we will say this, in the grand scheme of things, for the number of birds we had, it's not a scary number. No. Now, that being manageable. Honest, it's a manageable number. Now, that being said, there are definitely ways that we can uh, potentially look at lowering the feed cost. I will say this. It's, we can't figure out what percentage, but because of the way that they are managed through the summer. Free range. Free range. Th that, that number, like we noticed a, a significant difference when we got to, I'm going to say what, that November? Yeah. Beginning of November. When, End of when October, the, beginning of November. When we finally hit a, a hard frost mm -hmm. and you basically, the insects were gone, the plants stopped growing. Uh, there's still seeds and some things that they're eating, but there's a, there's a switch there where when you, st if you still have a lot of birds, they go you have eating. to make a lot more feed yes, to, to keep them, which is something that where we live, I mean, that's every animal is that way. Yeah. This year we had chicks born late. Late. I think it was about 23 chicks uh, were born in October and November. We had two batches hatch out mm -hmm. and uh, that has kind of caused a uh, knock on effect. Knock on because now we have... 22 chicks that are carrying over into 2022 exactly because they're they're small they're not able to be butchered and the one thing we're noticing is it doesn't matter how much we feed them they're really not growing they they are but it's, it's, it's slower slow. it's not the same it's as not the like when they're out able to forage so uh we are definitely seeing some issues with that because we haven't butchered a lot of the chicks that we've produced yet we'll go through next i guess what the chickens produce for us mm -hmm. in 20 in the 2021 calendar year so uh, the big one, I think, would probably be eggs. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually, for the first time Tracked ever, <laughs> tracked 
how many eggs came into the house every day. We didn't factor in the eggs that went to the froze pigs or, or froze yeah. or anything like that. Um, you know, the excess eggs from when somebody sat on them and we weren't sure how long, so we didn't put the them discard. into the human. These so, are ones that came in and were used for human consumption. Mm -hmm. We had uh, 586 eggs, which is actually almost 49 dozen. Which is pretty decent. Exactly. And uh, we kind of valued them at about 350. Now I know a lot of people say, wow, only 350 for homegrown eggs. But around we've, here, there's quite a few people selling kind them. kind of gone on the low end. Yeah. So uh, that was $168 worth of eggs that they produced, which is pretty good mm -hmm. uh, that we didn't have to buy at the grocery store. So uh, I think that's one thing that definitely comes off of that total of what we spent on feed. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we have, and I'll let you kind of talk a little bit more about the importance of this, but we had live sales and hatching egg sales. I, I think it's important if you're actually going to maintain a breeding population of chickens or anything, any livestock for that matter, having something, I'm going to say purebred, but having a breed, something that's recognizable, is beneficial because you will get people interested in starting their own flock. It has a higher value. I exactly. They, uh, you know, it, you're not necessarily charging a premium for it, but it's also not, uh, you know, the same as a run-of-the-mill hatchery bird that may maybe you can get $10 for sort of thing. In live sales and hatching eggs this year, we had $605, which is really awesome. I mean, that was basically half of what we'd spent in the feed almost. So that's, that's the nice part with that is that's definitely covering your breeding flock. Their, their feed cost is basically taken care of for those mm. roughly 30 birds. Yeah. Now the downfall to all of this is that of those 89 birds, now granted quite a few sold, mm -hmm. but we've only actually butchered 20 of them. Mm -hmm. We still have 22 young ones that will be butchered before the next batch hatches out, but it's it, between weather and uh, the, the slowness of their growth. We are seeing that this is going to carry late, over late, into 2022. Ones, yes. Now, one thing to keep in mind, so we have, a, we have a total poundage of basically chicken meat that we put in the freezer. It's a bit deceiving too, because a percentage of that was whole birds, which of course that's very easy, but a percentage of that was birds that were pieced apart. That's like your actual, this, this is, is the total weight that went in. Exactly um, everything that went in the freezer. Yeah. Um, so some of it was just breasts, some of it was uh, packages of legs and thighs. Mm -hmm. Had we weighed it all as sort of a dressed carcass, it would be it a, would higher have been a higher number. Higher um, number. Because kind of, uh, going with it. Uh, of the 20 birds, we only put 10 in the freezer as whole birds. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of those averaged out between four and a half and five and a half pounds. Uh, Dr dressed, dressed as a whole carcass. Uh, and then the rest would have been uh, meat that went in just as the, the meat. Mm -hmm. uh, but in total, we put just under 70 pounds into the freezer so far. If we take all that and kind of do it the way we've been doing with every other homestead economics video total of what we spent the one thousand three hundred and thirty dollars divided by the number of pounds that actually went in the freezer basically what we spent divided by how many pounds it actually cost us nineteen dollars a pound to raise those 20 birds that went into the freezer. So that's horrible. That's absolutely terrible. Um, but, but now we take... Now if you factor in how much we made in live sales and hatching egg sales and the value of eggs that we put in the fridge, so you're going to take that $605 and the 168 and minus that from your total feed cost, mm -hmm. uh, we end up with a value of $7.97 a pound, mm -hmm. which is way, way, way more realistic, uh, you know, in the you know grand and, scheme of things. And then we, we've kind of done some extrapolation here, assuming things this work This is hypothetical. Out. This is hy hypothetical where we're going next. But if those remaining 22 birds, 22 birds had been butchered in the calendar year. If we'd butchered them all, we're gonna just kind of rough estimate and say we would double the amount of meat because we'd done 20 birds and there's 22 birds left. Mm -hmm. You would have been down to $3.99 a pound, mm -hmm. which actually is fantastic. So the ultimate goal is to grow all of our in birds in year. one calendar year so that the economic numbers work. Uh, you know, uh, that's an, an interesting thing when we talked about this with um, people who buy broilers, for example. A very easy exercise to figure it's out how much to, your meat is worth. It's easy to track it. Because you have, you have the a, cost to buy, yep. the cost to feed, yep. 
divided by the number of pounds. Number of pounds. Hand. So it, it it does work really really well that's that one, way. That's where sort of quote unquote the put and take is nice because you can track that yeah. super easy. So that's something we've almost actually said we're going to kind of run as an exercise this year is to take one of our hatched out groups of partridge on eclairs and just track their feed and then from butcher. basically hatching to butcher. hatching to butcher yeah their mom will still be in with them but mm -hmm. hatching to butcher track their feed divide it by the number of pounds which should give us a Rough. comparable number to what the broiler grow out would have been keeping in mind that it's not identical well they're not the same type of bird you're not you know there's a lot of factors but it'd be an interesting exercise and kind of fun so we went a little bit further with this too because that's the cold hard numbers which as we said, in the grand, it's a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's it's manageable. You're not, uh, you you can uh, you can afford to do it. And there's always the really great argument of like, how much is it actually worth to you? Like, you can't can you put a price on that? Because this is not looking at, you know, the value of this. I'm gonna say it, organic, organic ethical meat, that sort of thing. Whatever kind of quantifier you want to put in it, this is just looking at uh, this is how much it cost to feed and this mm -hmm. is what we got but we also did a little bit of an exercise because our birds basically produce their own offspring and that's the point of having the flock is that because they will they will sustainably re replace themselves so you always have a feed cost input but technically those chicks minus the cost of the adult as i said the live sales alone covers those adults costs so those chicks, those 89 chicks, are costing you zero dollars to start, mm -hmm. essentially, if in this system. Versus if you had bought them as, uh, you know, to raise out for meat or to as raise as, 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 yeah, day olds uh, to raise for meat or as egg layers. So we, we kind of looked at some prices on chicks right now and uh, chicks have gone up in price. <laughs> yes. There was actually very little price difference between a heritage like a barred rock from a and hatchery. a broiler from, from a hatchery. hatchery. Uh, they were basically three dollars and twenty-five cents for an unsexed day old. Mm -hmm. uh, so to buy those eighty-nine chicks would have been two hundred and ninety dollars right off the bat. So uh, and that that's going to it. not partridge chanticleers. I mean, if you actually look up partridge chanticleers, don't we, do it. It's scary. Yeah, we right now we we <laughs> right before doing this video we went on to uh, Kijiji and uh, checked out the average price of. The going rate uh, right now for Partridge on Eclair chicks, and people are now this is private breeders, not hatcheries. People are selling basically day old chicks or, or pre orders for day old chicks between 10 and 15 dollars a chick. Yeah, which, uh, yes, the price to raise things out has gone up, but that's that's a lot to uh, for a day old. For a day old, you're not <laughs> the only way you would do that would be to try to build a, a, a breeding flock, and realistically, at that price, you probably wouldn't because. You still got to do some selection, but that's another, another discussion. Yes. So we didn't and no, even we calculate don't sell that. day olds. No, we don't usually. <laughs> we sell. We don't. We sometimes sell, uh, like our live sales come from once they're older birds, and we can select really kind of cream of the crop for people. We call a yeah. lot of animals, and uh, we only pass on the best. But, anyways, that's a, another whole topic. Yes, exactly. Um, so just a, a quick little recap, I think, and then we'll move on to the geese because we're kind of getting long winded here. That's what we do. If you were going to purchase 28 egg layers mm -hmm. and 89 chicks in your growing season and have them produce and feed them for the whole year, it would cost you, and we're saying you're buying those layers at... Point of lay. Point of lay. Not, well, as, not as day olds. You're point, buying those point layers of lay from the hatchery for the $14 of, yeah, from a hatchery bucks. at ready to lay. So uh, if you were to do that... And then feed that flock, which would be the same size of flock as what we have for the year. Mm -hmm. You're spending two thousand and twenty dollars. Now, hypothetically, they would have butchered their broilers mm -hmm. all in the same year, right? That would give you a total cost per pound to have that whole flock and your meat and your eggs. And I think we yeah we depreciated the egg yeah potential egg for about four dollars and fifty cents a pound. Mm -hmm. If you were purchasing them and feeding them the same way that we do, so Did they work out relatively close it, it's all hypothetical because we didn't get all of ours butchered and obviously we didn't buy broilers so we don't know the definites but we're basing it on a five pound 
broiler and uh, you know kind of going it by that so really uh, I think they kind of balance out which is a very interesting I think the, it would be a fun exercise the only, to try the only place where it doesn't balance out of course and again this is a bigger discussion is when you don't get everything butchered in time no sustainability because <laughs> if you were buying your birds every year you're dependent on somebody else and the the discussion of what we just said about the, looking at partridge on for example the price point has gone on a lot of the I'm going to say the rarer heritage stuff, but even on the on the very conventional, the price is going up. up. So if you're dependent on that, then you're always at the at the mercy of that rising cost. Whereas if you have your own flock, the difference is you're just to have your feed cost. Mm -hmm. You still have the feed cost with the purchase birds plus their purchase price. So something to think about. Well, I think last year when we did it, and we'll maybe link last year's chicken economics up here because mm -hmm. last year the partridge chanticleers were seven, I think they were $7.50. I, I didn't go back and watch it to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it was around right. $7.50. So we're seeing at least a $3 jump on a bird for that particular breed. Yep. And I believe that the hatch, hatchery ones were $2.70. Yep. Again, it's only 50 cents, but 50 cents times by however many you're growing out and if is it goes, significant. And if it goes up 50 cents every year every from year. now on, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see and that's that. now. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, you could even see these prices go up before spring because most people aren't quite thinking. Well, well, they're thinking about it, but, you know, it's the hatcheries still have lots of stock, so they're not kind of jacking prices yet. But So there's the chicken discussion. Uh, all in all, are we unhappy with it? No, nope. because it's checking a lot of No matter boxes. what, when we do our little sit down and go, okay, what animals would we never get rid of? The chickens are right in there with the sheep. And it really comes down to the egg production. For yeah. us, in our situation, with the land we have, etc., we have the ability to have a breeding flock of chickens. It makes a lot of sense for us to keep that because eggs in themselves are a valuable food item. On that note, next we're going into the geese because this will take a little less time to go through. Yes. <laughs> the geese are by far the most inexpensive animal that we raise. We had 13 geese for most of the year, uh, but we've gone up to 15 for a short period of time when we brought in the three uh, new ones at the end of, uh, I guess that was what, November or October? It was later in the season. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll put that video somewhere too. But, but then we also took two more out, so... It, it kind of balanced. We're averaging it at 13 geese mm -hmm. for the year, basically. Yep. In total, uh, on again, they have a grain mixture. Um, we don't uh, do a, a pre-manufactured feed for them, mm -hmm. except for on occasion. Uh, uh, we starter. had the younger, the starter. So we had the golden grower uh, starter. for starter. We had two bags of that, and then the rest was just grains that filtered in from mm -hmm. everything else. Uh, so in total, we had two hundred and thirty-eight dollars and ninety-six cents spent this year on the geese, which is nothing for a breeding flock. No. <laughs> for what they could produce you in the end. And this is where we kind of get into a tricky situation, because once again with the geese, we haven't butchered them yet. No, we haven't completely finished it. <laughs> we butchered two. We still have four to butcher. Uh, main focus this year with the geese was kind of Growing increasing flock. our flock. We started with two pairs, and now we're going into this year with four pairs. So we traded with people mm -hmm. to get some new genetics, and we've also kept two from ours to then pair off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These where we are typically go for about $50 a goose. Yeah. Uh, Day-olds are cheaper, but they're still like 20 To To kind of quickly wrap up the geese, because it's really not that eventful, because we didn't have a lot of them this year, and we it'll be interesting to see what 2022 is like, because hopefully they're going to run in the proper season. Technically, we only butchered two geese, and in total weight, it was 21 and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. So if you took the feed cost divided by that 21 and a half pounds, you were $11 a pound. That doesn't sound great on paper, but at the same time, that's pretty weak to only have butchered two geese out of 13. Mm -hmm. So if we had hypothetically butchered the six geese that we have to butcher, in the like, right time frame. we have four out there that are ready to butcher, but again, weather and other factors have kept us from doing so, it would have worked out to being $3.98 a pound. The take home message with this exercise both the actual and the and the hypothetical is in the old days people used to kind of butcher poultry as they needed them keep mm -hmm. them on hand well because they didn't have freezers and things. exactly looking at these numbers even though you're still going to have to continue to feed them geese are by far the cheapest poultry if you have the space to float if you have the space <laughs> 
and they are the cheapest to float so if you were actually going to do it as a butcher as you need them they cost you very little and mm -hmm. I think the real take home message there is that's because they are the only true, true. pastured poultry you they do well not exclusively you do need to feed them but they do very well on mostly pasture mm -hmm. the chickens are expensive in a way because even if you're buying chicken prepared chicken food pellets etc chickens require a lot of variety yeah compared to because they are very much omnivores omnivores are typically more expensive to feed than herbivores well, I mean, so we, we do find that chickens require a lot of variety in order mm -hmm. to get the nutrients and vitamins and minerals and yes. everything that they Which, need where the geese don't seem to have an issue because they go out and collect their own they're still really getting well. variety from what they're grazing on but the chickens <clears throat> although they're eating weeds and and stuff the amount of protein insects and stuff that they're eating when they're available is is quite substantial pretty much that's our poultry, poultry. economics in the grand scheme of things to keep both flocks going uh i would say it's well within the realm of quite economical mm -hmm. to do would still encourage people to do it what we're trying to kind of prove i guess you could say is that a sustainable flock flock uh that makes it so you never are dependent on purchasing those chicks every year and things like that is actually in the just realm. as economical now granted yes you have a year-long tie but for the that that seems like a little little price not, to pay yeah, for the for, for having the sustainability and having the ability to never have to worry if you could get those chicks or mm -hmm. that sort of thing and you do have that ability to take that animal and create a little bit of income from it not a great amount you just a little bit that supplements well, which is and, nice and one thing too I will say with the chickens it was very easy to look at sort of we have the eggs production and we have a meat production and there is some other services that you get from chickens that you can't put a value on but the geese one thing we didn't really touch on is they also have value added uh yes. pieces down the down we is made a, a pillow is a huge one now a really nice pillow. it's a slow one because you only get so much per goose but uh, it still has a value and the other one with geese oil Yes. Oil prices are going up. Like cooking oil. Cooking mean. oil. Yeah. Uh, geese actually produce... One, one goose cooked in the oven produced me one whole liter of liquid oil that sat on the shelf and has been used. We've almost used it all, but it's sat on the shelf and in two months we've consumed it. And put that in perspective too. One liter of olive oil right now, I'm going to pick on olive oil because I know that, but is about $13 to $14 unless you can find it on sale. Although they do get some grains, I would say relatively speaking, the amount of grains the geese gets pretty low compared to some other animals. But that's basically uh, pasture produced oil lard. and lard. <laughs> So from a, from a health perspective, although I do not have the, the statistics on that, it's something we're going to look into. You're producing that byproduct with, with basically pasture, mm -hmm. which is fairly significant yeah. in my yeah. opinion. I think the geese, again, uh, very similar to as what we said in our rabbit, rabbit economic video. The geese are something that we're really going to play around with this year. I think we're going to focus on mastering those two. We already know the chickens are going to be all skewed again for 2022's economics because we have so many still to butcher that are going to be factored into that. But hopefully by December 2022 we'll, we'll be on track. Does. Thanks for staying with us this well, long. Yes, but <laughs> <laughs> this exercise does show that um, it's a yearly cycle may not be exactly, you know, January 1st to December 31st. It sort of depends. And although in the case of the chickens, having chickens born late is not ideal uh, because it definitely, you know, having things born at a time of year that they can't forage for a substantial amount of their food doesn't make a lot of sense because you end up feeding them a lot more, which skews your yeah. costs. Yeah. So then they just don't grow as well if they can't get out there and forage. They, they really don't. That's this one. Hopefully you found it interesting. Our, uh, our next one will be looking at the garden slash vegetable side the of things. really exciting We think one. this is probably the most interesting one. And if you stayed this long. And it's a new long, one for us because we didn't actually do it last year. Well, and if you stayed this long, uh, definitely go back and see our very first video from uh, 2023 to looking back at 2021 and uh don't forget to uh, put in your guess for how much we actually yes. produced because winner will be announced yeah in our next economic in our garden economics video we will announce the winner and the prize stuff for that 
first video. So we'll put the link in the description for the very first video, just in case. Uh, I'm not sure if we have enough tags left to be able to put it above. So we'll put it in the uh, description below, and uh, be sure to go and check that out and place your bets, bets, guesses, guesses, on just how much poundage you think we brought into the house for 2021.